Hi class, welcome to the online session. We are now going to discuss on acute inflammation and we have four slides for this session. What are they? We have slide number five, that is on acute fibrinous pericarditis. We have slide 06, that's acute meningitis. Slide 58, fibrinous pleuritis. And our last slide for this session is slide 78, that is acute salpingitis. So let's start with slide. Uh, let's start with slide zero five. Okay. So I'm going to show you the the entire tissue first. Okay. So that you would have or you would be able to appreciate uh, the appearance of the tissue itself. Okay. So the pericardium. If we're going back to histology, it's mainly composed of fibrocollagenous to fibroadipose tissue. Okay, so let's go back here. Okay, in this particular area, you would see that it's composed of fibroadipose. There, fibroadipose to fibrocollagenous tissue. Okay. That would be the normal composition of the pericardium. But ha what happens in the slide is that there is something okay, that would cause an increase in its thickness from being fibrocollagenous, fibroadipose, it becomes thicker than usual. And slide number five, acute fibrinous pericarditis, it shows this thicker wall attributed to pink amorphous material, which we would call as fib fibrin. Okay. So, and uh, if we are going to look into pericarditis, this would refer to inflammation of the pericardium. There would be thickening of the pericardium. There would be an increase in the fluid content within the pericardial sac. And this can be admixed with serous fluid and fibrinous exudates. What would be the most common causes for this? It can be the presence of myocardial infarction. And days after or weeks after, there can be a post-infarction pericarditis, which we would call it as a Dressler syndrome, D-R-E-S-S-L-E-R. Okay. Uh, and it can also be caused by uremia, by chest radiation, by rheumatic fever, systemic lupus erythematosus, and trauma. Okay. So what you have here would be a, uh, the presence of, so this one would be the fibrin. We have the presence of some red blood cells. Let's try to go into the higher magnification. So we have an admixture of cells here. This would be the segmenter, uh, another segmenter. We have fibroblasts, uh, lymphocytes, and histiocytes. Okay. Here we have segmenters, segmenters. Okay. For those of you who have forgotten already, um, segmenters, this one would be the predominating cell during uh, an acute inflammatory process. The lymphocytes like this, like this, and then we have histiocytes. They are the most common uh, inflammatory cells in a chronic inflammatory process. Okay. So I go to other areas. Okay. So again, these are fibrinous material. We have the segmenters or the neutrophils. When you have the spindly character, these are fibroblasts maybe uh, in this patient. This, uh, this is uh, more than three days. Okay, We have uh, red blood cells in the area. Okay. So again, this one would show the presence of uh, fibrin. Okay, a more acidophilic or eosinophilic 
material, we have segmenters, okay, or neutrophils in the area. So our patients would uh, complain of of uh, irritation. Okay, they have chest pain. Uh, we would call this one as having a pericardial friction rub. Okay, pericardial friction rub. So here are other areas which show which shows to us more of the segmenters. Segmenter, segmenter. We have segmenters over there. Okay. Okay. Segmenters or neutrophils, neutrophils, fibrin. Okay. So now next, let's move to the next slide, which is acute meningitis. Okay. So before uh, we begin with uh, the discussion, I'd like to show you the features of the slide. So this is a brain, brain. Uh, this is a brain tissue. Um, the darker area would refer to the white matter, which would be composed of the uh, axons. And then you have the gray matter over here, which would show you the presence of the neurons as well as the glial, uh, the glial cells. Okay. We go around, okay, again, when you have the darker portions, this would refer to the white matter, gray matter. Okay. Differentiating characteristic there would be the presence of the neurons. Okay. So let's go around, move around to the area. Okay. Okay, so what is this slide all about? This slide is all about inflammation of the meninges. So what are the meninges? We have the, uh, we have the dura, which is the thickest among the, them. We have the arachnoid, which is the middle portion. And then we have the pia. Sometimes the pia and the arachnoid would, would fuse together. And this is inflammation of the meninges. It can be acute, pyogenic pyogenic, which can be bacterial, or which would be bacterial, and then we have the acute viral. Okay. So these patients would have uh, signs and symptoms due to increase in the intracranial pressure. And this can be headache, fever, neck stiffness, photophobia, irritability, and sometimes even they, they may have behavioral problems like clouding of consciousness. Uh, for the bacterial type of acute meningitis, uh, the culprit here would be the Escherichia coli and the group, the, uh, group B streptococcus for neonates. If it's the elderly, it's the streptococcus pneumoniae and the Listeria monocytogenes. And if it's the uh, adult and the adolescent, it's Neisseria meningitidis. Okay, so what do we have to look for here in the slide? Okay, we look at the spaces in between the gray matter. So this is the meninge. We look for these areas. So notice that we have a lot of cells in the area. And then high power magnification, voila. So you would see a lot of uh, cells that would have lobulated nuclei, and what are they? They are segmenters or neutrophils because this is the acute meningitis. Sometimes the uh, inflammation can affect the, uh, the gray matter, and if it's affected, we call it as meningoencephalitis, okay? Um, sometimes we can have patients exhibiting signs and symptoms of septicemia, okay? And we, we call it as a meningo meningococcemia. And this is uh, what we call as the Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome, okay? So that's F-R-I-D-E-R-I-C-H-S-E-N, okay? That's Friedrichsen syndrome. And this is attributed to the uh, meningococcal or pneumococcal meningitis. Okay. 
So this is again acute meningitis. Okay. Here. Okay. So that's acute meningitis. We can see a lot of those inflammatory cells. Uh, next, we go to slide 58. Okay. So again, we try to go over the rest of the slide so that you would understand okay, wh where we are. Okay. So what is this slide? Uh, the organ here would be lung tissue with the pleura. Okay. So notice the presence of the bronchiole and then we have the smaller spaces here pertaining to the alveoli. Okay. So what do we see here? There's a lot of okay, there's a lot of inflammatory cells within the alveolar spaces and within the walls of the interstitium. So what are those cell types? Okay, they have lobulated nuclei. So what are they? Segmenters or neutrophils. So what is the importance of uh, having this one when we are our slide here is fibrinous pleuritis okay fibrinous pleuritis it means that there's a presence of inflammation of the pleura so in fibrinous pleuritis okay so the same as what we have uh, discussed in the pleurite uh, pericarditis this one would show the presence of pink or eosinophilic amorphous material which uh, we would call as uh, which we would call as fibrin, okay? And then we have a lot of segmenters in the area. Okay, so we have a lot of segmenters there. So this is uh, attributed to the pneumonia. There would be seeding of the organism into the adjacent uh, adjacent tissue that's the pleura it will uh, it can be caused by pneumonia it can be caused by tuberculosis itself it can be caused by lung infarcts lung abscess or even the bronchiectasis okay so you can see a lot of inflammatory cells there There, there's a lot. So how do you differentiate it from the pericarditis? Of course, you always would look at the presence of lung tissue. Okay, if you're only going to look at this area, you might mistake it for pericarditis. Okay, so that one. That this is uh, this is fibrinous pleuritis. Okay, with the lung tissue. Our last slide for this session would be slide 78, which is acute salpingitis. Okay, so acute salpingitis, uh, when we talk about salpinges, take note, we do not have an H with salpinges. Okay, so not PH, but P-I-N-G-I-T-I-S. This is an inflammation of the fallopian tube. And... Uh, it can be caused by normal, uh, normal uh, organisms found in the uh, that can inhabit the cervical tissue, but patients who have or would present with pelvic inflammatory disease uh, can present with acute salpingitis. So this can be caused by uh, sexually transmitted diseases like chlamydia trachomatis and Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay. So let's go over with what we see in the slide. Okay. So we can see a slightly thickened or slightly enlarged tissue that's a fibromuscular to fibroadipose. We have here the plicae that are also thickened. And then we look at the areas okay. so these are lined by columnar cells okay. 
So you can see a mixed infiltrates. You have segmenters over here. You have lymphocytes over here. Histiocytes in the background. How do you know that it's a lymphocyte uh, segmenter? Again, the lobulation of the nucleus. How do you know that it's a lymphocyte by tissue? You would see the presence of very dense chromatin pattern, scanty cytoplasm. How do you know that they are histiocytes? Okay. So histiocytes are noted to have So let's see. These are these are some of the histocytes. I'll check. Huh? Let's try to look for histocytes. Okay. Think more of lymphocytes and histocytes. Ah, uh, lymphocytes and neutrophils. So segmenters, lymphocytes, darker ones, histiocytes are the ones with more vesicular, uh, they, they would have uh, more cytoplasm than the, uh, than the lymphocytes. So these are columnar cells that would line the uh, fallopian tube lumen. Okay, so those are the slides that we have for this session. So thank you, and I'm going to give another session on acute inflammation. Okay, thank you and good day.